stranger too. He's yes. an outdoor enthusiast. The one and only Bima Prasena, who actually ha also happens to be one of our producers here at Sea mm. Today. He's in charge of a program called Sea Indonesia, which explores the beauty of Indonesia. And this morning, we're going to take a deeper look at your wealth and experience in this area, uh, Bim. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Oh. <laughs> nice to have you in front of the camera for a while. Yes, so uh, Bima, you actually started to become a mountaineer around, what, 2004, right? 2004, yeah. And you loved it ever since? Um, yes. <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah. There's a pause there, Paul. <laughs> and actually, you have uh, conquered, you know, hundreds of mountains, both within the country and also abroad. Yeah, right. but I never counted, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay, first of all, uh, it, it takes a lot of training in order to do what Bima does, and it can take up to two years to finish. So before one can be a professional mountaineer, it is not advised to just go up a mountain without any proper knowledge yes. or equipping yourself with the proper gear. So let's get uh, started here by talking about that first. If we're talking about outdoor activities, especially hiking and mountaineering, is it true that we need a special, specific kind of skill set and the training that, it, that involves in teaching us that skill set can last for two years? Mm. Is that true? Yes, some organization that has their own um, um, way, method to train right. people. Okay. But in my case, I, I must uh, pass for two years before I... Um, um, you said that it's professional, but we don't... We don't necessarily uh, as a pro profession as right. a mountain climbing, but it's a kind of a hobby. But uh, you know, to get the proper training, that what one needs to to pass through before right. you know. Uh, what what is what are some of the things that you learn for this particular sort of uh, training? Well, a lot of things. That uh, the first is to how to prepare and manage yourself prior to the expedition or the okay. climbing mm. itself, right. and the on the expedition itself, how do you how you manage the, the team itself, mm -hmm. and how to use, uh, how if there's something happen, mm. and how you survive on that particular um, event situation, yeah. right? I would yeah. think that would be one of the most important ones because you have to be prepared for anything out there because yes. it's so unpredictable, right? You're yeah. in the wild, you're in nature, right. so anything can happen. So you have to kind of list all the situations that could happen and how you're going to deal with and it in each one. You need to tackle everything with yes. you know, the gears that you have sure. at the moment, right? That's true. Now, uh, you did mention uh, that you forgot how many mountains you've climbed already, right? <laughs> so, but I want to know, what, what was the first mountain you know, you've climbed? The first mountain, I guess it would be uh, the, uh, in West Java, but I forget the, the name because right. it's not a popular mountain. Right. And we train as a pioneer. You know, okay. it's oh, not okay. just like a mountain climber, but we do expedition that uh, that what we say that it's a pioneering expedition that nobody knows where it is. So no there was there was a special mission to it. Yes. Ah. So nobody's done that before, basically. Ne nobody done wow. that before. That's gotta yeah. be scary. No? Well, we train for for my case, it's my first time, and which uh, I trained like that, so right. it's not kind of scary for me okay. because I don't have to. Uh, something to compare to. Okay, but I don't think uh, I don't I think we be. can compare because I think he was a bit. I'm starting to get the idea. He's a bit of a thrill seeker, <laughs> a bit of an adrenaline junkie here. So, what's the highest peak that you've conquered so far? Um, conquered in 2016. Uh, I go to Himalayas in Nepal. Mm. Um, Im Jasa, they, they call it the, the peak. It's 6,189 meters above sea level. Okay. Yes, wow. it's no ice peak. And what were the conditions like? I, obviously, it's hard to breathe. Yes. Of and course. did you need any sort of apparatus? No, no. Um, Six thousand. We still can breathe normally, but it's only um, less than half okay. um, oxygen that we can breathe. Wow. Oh. Normal. Shortness yes. of breath, definitely. So we need to to acclimatize before that. Yeah. That happened. The the, right. the climbing happened. And the and the clouds are beneath you at this point, right? Yes. I, oh wow! Yes, I've always wanted to know what that felt like to look down at the clouds. I'll just take a look at the picture. Yeah, I'll just take an airplane. There you go. <laughs> That's the same thing. <laughs> now, Vima, um, as we are going camping or mount climbing, maybe there are you know stuffs that or gears that we ac yeah. actually need to take with us, right, for the yeah. trip. Now, um, can you just share with us here, you know, the equipment or the gears that is a must for a rookie? Well, actually, the irony is my equipment is has more 
um, you know, experience than me because okay. <laughs> in, in mountain climbing uh, community that we can we support each other. There. So mm. if you go to the, um, any mountains that um, you, you don't have the equipment, that mm. we can support you. Okay. So today <laughs> I don't have. <laughs> you don't all, have it so all, right? Some of it. Okay. Uh, I got here, um, but it basically it's kind of mountaineering uh, equipment right. that, as you can see here, it's a climbing equipment that we use um, in high mountains mm -hmm. and rocky mountains. So basically, uh, we start from here. That this is this is the harness that where you can put yourself. Um, okay, this is the one that goes around yes. you. This is the it's main like the harness. Belt, can you show right? us how you how do you? Okay. Uh, it looks like this something that I have for my baby boy, but much <laughs> bigger adult that's, version. That's for walking, right? Walker. Yeah. Yeah. Do I need to go here? But yeah, yeah. yeah. Free. Show us how okay. it's done. Okay. Okay. This is the leg loop. Now it doesn't. It doesn't look very big, but I'm sure it's very strong. Like it's obviously strong enough to hold you. Yes. Yeah. And you feel safe right. using this. Look at okay. that. It's okay. kind of have a. You can withstand um, in newton meters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so how trustworthy Impact. is this equipment? Because obviously you, this is your your entire weight is sometimes being supported on this um, with the ropes. Do yes. you have to prepare and double check everything before you go? Yes, of course. And that is that is the problem with rookie okay. um, climbers. So right. we need to feel the equipment first and make sure that the equipment is certified okay. first. Okay. And then it comes to the how to mentally train for that. So sure. How you um, uh, trust okay. this right. with your, <laughs> well, with your yeah. life. <laughs> That's pretty much your life is in the hands <laughs> yes. of those straps. That is right. Those, okay, yeah. if I'm wearing one of those, uh, Bima's only wearing one. I yeah. think I'm going to wear three. <laughs> I don't think yeah, so. just, yeah. just to be just safe. Just in case, right? this is a backup. Three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now I've seen these all the time. Like, so explain yeah. that, the carabiners. Yes, this is the carabiners where you can put uh, some equipment to your okay. um, 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 for rope, rope, for instance. Right? And, and they're all different to... sizes and different shapes. They all yes. have different purposes? Different sizes, different purposes. Um, for instance, it's, uh, this one, it's used when you, um, when you climb. Okay. And um, you need to put the first um, anchor. Yeah. Right. You use this. And then this is more secure than this one. The first one, okay. right? Yeah. It's got right. a lock on it. Yeah, because this is have a lock. It has a lock, lock, right? Okay. okay. Has a lock. Okay. And it and um, a helmet. I'll, I'll just take a bunch of these, the ones with the locks. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is we, what we call the ascenders. Okay, I've seen those. So basically, they act like a grip that one. for the rope. So it right. helps yeah, you yeah. grip the rope that's without right. you having to literally use your yes. fingers. Yes, fingers. That's right. right. So that's how you can climb. Okay. Oh, all, right. all right. Okay. And if we need to rappel down or abs abseil, we use this one. Okay. We call it figure of eight. Okay. So you can rifle down. Okay. Right. And then, of course, you need to wear the yeah. number one, helmet. Right? Yeah. Number Check one. <laughs> okay. Because of the rocks falling and everything. So and I've got the ropes here. Um, those are extra ropes. And how yeah. about the shoes there? Is yeah, there I noticed. Those you know, are actually type? climbing shoes, right? right? Yes. Yeah. This is the climbing shoes. This is a uh, um, special made for climbing. They look very well worn, by the way. <laughs> look at the bottoms of them. Yeah. Is, it, is it thin or can it, can it just touch yes. it a little bit? So it's thin and flexible. Oh, so you need to be able to kind of right. almost yes. be at the surface of the rocks. Okay. So if you, you have uh, you have your, your regular shoes, you, right. your shoes are like this. Uh, right. Your feet will be like this. Right. Sure. But when you use this, your feet will be like this. Oh, it has to be tight. Yes. Super tight. Super tight. Okay. Why is that? Because you need to... to um, um, take the those point yeah. really small, okay. right? right? So you can you kind of um, need your toes to be able to push it in, push it in, oh. and your other fingers support the toes. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. so you can't have any give whatsoever because it's such a small margin for error, yes. I guess, right? When you're on those small crevices. Yes. Okay. So you have to when you're hiking. Let's say you're mountaineering. You're wearing your regular boots, but then when you have to climb a surface, you're gonna have to switch up to your yes, your climbing right. shoes. Oh, okay. So there's a lot of equipment to carry. How tiring of... is it to bring all that upwards, like <laughs> really? thousands of meters? 
Well, mountain climbing is actually tiring. <laughs> yeah, it, it okay. seems very draining even doing it on yes. your own. Of like, course. Especially with, how, how many kilos are we looking at total equipment when you're actually going? Ascending? I think 20 to 40 kilos. Wow. 20 to 40, yes. so you wear a backpack, you put all the stuff yes. on your back and you climb it with yeah. it. Okay, including the tent as well. Yes, oh, not oh, include wow. the documentaries uh, equipment. Sure, yeah, <laughs> uh, cameras, yeah, right. GoPros, and all this stuff. Sort of Food, maybe, right? Okay. okay, so these are some of the challenges uh, you can already see before you even start, because yeah. you have to imagine climbing a mountain, imagine already carrying like an extra 40 kilos yeah. with you. Yeah. But there's such a thing called um, acute I don't want to get this wrong. Acute mountain sickness, is that? Yes. Okay, can you explain what AMS is? Well, acute mountain sickness is kind of a, a um, illness that occurs in high altitude. Why? Why because that? of um, above 3,000 meters, our body is quite a, um, must push itself mm. to get used to the low oxygen. Okay. okay. So it's a lack of oxygen. Lack of oxygen, okay. yes. So uh, because of the because of the because of the um, uh, the lack of oxygen, right? Even mm -hmm. even the the professional one can get also the AMS, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can't really train to uh, avoid that, right? Yes, okay. it sometimes appears uh, somewhere. So what are the symptoms of AMS? Like what can start happening if you start suffering from it? Um, some people, most of the people, uh, get headache, really, really bad headache. Okay. okay. Uh, some of the people um, lost their control of their body, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, unconsciousness and right. really uh, uh, guide them to, to death. Right. Okay. And uh, hallucinations can happen as yes. well, right? Have I've seen that. Has it happened to you before? Yes. Oh. It has. Okay. So how did you deal with it when you, you felt okay? I think I think I'm getting this acute mountain yeah, sickness. Yeah. How do you end up dealing with it so you can still manage yourself? Um, well, I need to go down first. Right. Oh, you have to start descending right away. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. There's no way other way around it. No other way. The okay. the uh, the um, uh, medicine is only helping you to deal with the okay the situation, mm -hmm. but is mm -hmm. not curing. Okay. The cure itself just descends. Just get down. Okay. Well, that's a red flag for sure, right? To look out. Of course. <laughs> All now, right. um, why was the Kumatori mountain climb so memorable for you? Oh, the oh there's okay. a good story. <laughs> uh, brought a smile to his face immediately. <laughs> right, so in 2018, uh, we kind of initiate our, my, our own project, me with uh, my friend Rizal, to climb the 49 highest points mm. in 49 oh. uh, Asian countries. Okay. And that time, the first climbing is in Fuji in winter season. After that, the, Rizal um, go home first because the flight is um, ahead of me, right. mm -hmm. and I still have three or two, two or three days uh, to spend in Tokyo. Okay. And then I said, "What, uh, what am I going to do in? Why city? not climb a mountain then? If you have a couple That's of days right. to go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what always crosses my mind <laughs> on a vacation. So, so I have opened up my smartphone and I, what is the highest mountain in Tokyo Prefecture? Right. Wow. And that is uh, what comes out and this um, is we're looking is, at it right now yeah. right this go. is what you That's came up mountain. with when you googled it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so then? the commentary mountain is not a popular mountain for the foreign mountaineers okay right. so uh, everything is signage and everything is in um, not in romanji but uh, in japanese right. so right. it's really hard to understand that right. sure yes. so what uh, I choose the, the the longest path to climb up. Right. And I Were choose... you alone by Yes, no, okay. it's solo. <laughs> okay, okay so this, this and is... we're looking at documentation from you. Yes. yes. This one. Okay. And um, unfortunately when I go down, um, I choose to the 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 shortest one. Right. But it turns out it turns out the highest and the lo uh, the the longest one. Oh. You know? Oh, okay. well, you made a mistake there. A little, okay. <laughs> you made a mistake. <laughs> and then, oh, look at your face there. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, the, um, at that point, uh, I cannot go back because there's a lot of uh, gears in my sure. back. Right, so right. Yeah. I cannot climb, You're climb up. You're so, committed already. Yeah, yeah, I know that I can do this if I go uh, straight down, mm -hmm. but in, uh, the, the risk is to... Um, lose my uh, tickets. Oh, oh right. Okay. okay, you're still yes. trying to catch your... Yeah, yeah right. Because okay. of the time, <laughs> so, yes. 
at the uh, middle of the track, so I met this one guy. There's only one guy that, in that that long track. There's only one guy that I met. Right. So he said, uh, "Where are you going to go? I'm going to go here. This is not the track. It's not the course. This is the the longest one." You right. sure? You sure it was a real guy, right? You're not hallucinating. <laughs> I <laughs> think <running>. so. <laughs> <laughs> was it the guy in the video for that? <laughs> Uh, I think not. No? Yeah, no. Okay. And no, then? So you, then how did it go? How did it end? So he started to uh, help me to get to the uh, to, to finish the course oh, right. and nice. in time. So um, in order to make the last bus to get the, the in the last uh, to the last station, right. I need to you know uh, hike down for four hours. And right, I'll, I'll cut you just there. Uh, sorry. Um, so when you communicate uh, with this. So-called stranger. Stranger, <laughs> yeah. yes. Were you talking in English or in English? In English, yes. so he understood. Understood. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Good. Okay, okay. That so, that okay. That continue. Fortunately, okay. I, I, was, I was thinking that you know he communicated with you know a ghost or something. No, no, no. <laughs> obviously, you know? well, it was an English-speaking one. <laughs> okay. Oh, be like this. Mm. I know. <laughs> so you went down. Uh, it was in time. It was in time for the last bus. You just made it. Oh. I made it. Out. The last bus and the last last train. Right. So how uh, like so basically you pushed yourself to the limit. You were able to finally make it, but it did take you the entire time that yes. you gave yourself in order to do this. What was the total time that you from the point you left all the way until you eventually made that last bus? I think it's um, close to 12 hours again. Wow, mm. outstanding. 12 hours, yeah. Non-stop well, work, and that's a lot of. A, you have really a strong endurance there. So, <laughs> it does, doesn't so it? You've got, you, that was one, out of, but then this project is ongoing. You mentioned how many? 49 peaks in total? 49 peaks. How's that going so far? Um, well, we started in 2018, but in 2020, we cannot write, you know? So it's just only three that we managed to finish. Okay. Right. For uh, Japan in Fuji, uh, Doi Ethanon in Thailand, and Vietnam in Phan Chi Phan Mountain. Okay, let me ask you about, uh, since you mentioned the pandemic, this is all outdoors, it's part of nature, there's no big crowds. How has the pandemic affected, I mean, apart from taking a flight to a different country, obviously there's restrictions and rules yes. and quarantine, but apart from that, has climbing or mountaineering changed since the pandemic? Yes, of course, because uh, some, uh, some um, um, let's say, uh, national parks, uh, they have, rules that we must you know oh. obey, yeah, obey right? right because um and then um, um the last mountain that i go mm -hmm. is in papua which is uh, very very remote and yeah. it's not a popular mountain so it's not that different right you know not not that different prior to that to the pandemic okay. era but right. um yeah because we need to go to the civilization first before to go, go to the mountain. Of course. Right. So yeah, that is the difference, not, not in the mountain. Okay, uh, so about your um, upcoming plans for mount climbing, um, you know, which mountain you want to conquer by yourself or with your <laughs> team maybe, yeah. right? Well, um, I hope that I can go to the highest mountain in Indonesia, Kartan's Pyramid in Papua, uh, because they, there's a two years um, off season mm. oh, wow. climbing, so um, my friends need to, you know, to to prepare the tracks again, mm. to change the the ropes and everything. Yeah. Oh, to, right, because it hasn't been used in two yes, years, so two then years. you have to make sure everything yeah. is still yes. safe. And I hope that I can con contribute uh, to that expedition for to prepare the. Mountain you can take Paul here. with you. you know, <laughs> Paul, just do the report you here. I'll, right? help. I'll be boots on the ground. I'll there. be helping you guys through radio. <laughs> Actually, since uh, you mentioned contributions, we do know we've been reporting all week long about Mount Sumeru. Yeah. Obviously, that is a big concern, especially for mountaineers as well. So what have you guys uh, uh, done to help those in the area? Have there been any uh, kind of collective efforts with mountaineers in Indonesia in order to help those in need? Because obviously, your skill set and guys like you can uh, really come in handy right now over there. Yes, um, well, I have friends uh, that are um, raising funds to, to help people there, mm -hmm. and I try to, what I can, to, to help them um, in social media, of course. Okay. And uh, right now, we kind of, um, in C today also, we, we see this sent right now, by the way. Yeah. We some people there and uh, right. how to report the situation so everything can inform uh, 
in right way. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. So if we, if you know, um, people want to donate something, they yes. can go to this site ayobentu.com slash yes. bentu bangkit. That is okay. right. Dash Bima Prasad, Dash, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's been a lot of fun, Bima, to have you in the studio. Thank you very much. Always <laughs> love watching your your footage and your documentation because I personally don't think I will ever experience it myself. So to get the next best thing, I'll get Bima to go and be my eyes and ears <laughs> in the mountains no, for me. No, I am near with Bima's hobby. I like glamping. Yeah, you're, right? okay. I think that's more for us, right? That's more <laughs> our speed. Because, but kidding. I'm very impressed, Bima, because I, I am in awe of guys like you that can do this and do this for fun. Yes. Because if guys like you didn't do this, and we wouldn't know how vast and wonderful our nature has to True. offer. So Thank keep it up. You, make sure you stay safe. We need you back here in the studio. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, guys, so thank you very much to Bima once again. So we are going to do um, a break. Yep. So after the break, so you might want to come back here because we've got more stories just for you, okay?